All right. Uh, good afternoon. Chaplain Dean Alley here. I want to take a little bit here. This video may take a little bit longer. I'm going to load a live video um, in a little while up on YouTube. It'd be much shorter, but it stays within the narrative of what I've been talking about um, for for a little while now. <clears throat> um, you know, we we talked about salvation. We talked about rapture. We talked about the white gro uh, white throne judgment. Um, let me give you another viewpoint of where I'm at on this. Is I go to and I've been studying. I've been reading a lot of uh, of the prophetic books and um, looking at it. And as the Bible says, we are to rightly divide the truth for ourselves. So, what is the truth, right? So if I look at James 4.14, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little while and then vanishes away. It's in James 4.14. It can be said, what is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanish vanishes. We're only here for a short amount of time. Um, so there's a sharp, or I should say there has been um, a sharp increase or a lot of increasing of people trying to predict the end times, trying to predict when the rapture and all those things are going on. And I'm going to give you a little data as, as, I, as I know it and as I uh, provide it as best I can to you. I, I don't claim to know everything, and I'm certainly... You'll 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 know that, but I can give you what I've studied, and what I what I what I've un, I've, I've uh, uh, revealed, and I'll share that with you. So the Bible, um, it's clear things are going to get worse, right? Um, Christ Himself said that no one knows the day and the hour of His return, not even His angels or the Son, but the Father. It's pretty clear there. So the Bible warns us. We know against the false prophets. False prophets would be somebody that says something that doesn't come true, uh, or it, is, it goes against the Bible. Um, there's a lot of that going on out there. Uh, people take certain things in the Bible, which is the truth, and they twist it to fit their narrative, or how it, how it feels for them, and how it applies to them, instead of the other way around, the Bible applying to them. They take themselves and apply it to the Bible and make it whatever they want it to be. So um, so in Jeremiah 23, 16, we know they talks about false prophets. Uh, Deuteronomy was pretty clear about it in 18. Uh, Matthew 7, 15 was clear. Uh, they, they basically are advising um, to discern the false prophet. Um, and you know this by what? Galatians is clear. By their fruit. If you spend a little time with somebody or you're with somebody, um, you get to know if it's the true individual. Um, and, uh, and you know if it's an accuracy there. So when I see the Old Testament prophets, I could see where, some, where mo a lot of it was already fulfilled. Therefore, those prophecies and prophets were of true. Um, Many people will say, well, there's prophets today, and there's people that have visions. And I'm, I'm not here to disband the, 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 or, or dis, disregard any of that. That's not what I'm here for. Um, but um, I, I want to look at the accuracy of these people that are claiming that uh, this is the day that uh, it's come. So let's face it. Uh, while we all agree we're living in the end times, right? We know that once uh, Jesus came and then in Acts it started the church, uh, the church age of the end time. So, um, so I believe that, and I think uh, for quite some time, and I don't think no one, uh, and and no one, including myself, knows when precisely God's final prophecy clock will start ticking. We don't know that. Even Jesus walked among us here. Uh, some would say when he walked here, he he lost a little bit of the divine. That's why he didn't know. Again, speculation and not, I can't, I can't find that supported in the Bible. These are just man-made uh, thoughts that come up every once in a while. Um, so with that in mind, uh, anyone foolishly setting a date must think uh, they're in, they are more enlightening 
and privilege than Jesus, right? Imagine that. If I tell you a certain date, time, and hour when Jesus, I mean, when, uh, you know, God's going to create the rapture or the, or the uh, uh, you know, or the second coming, I'm saying I'm better than Jesus because Jesus didn't even know. And that's, that's totally ridiculous. So I wouldn't know that. Um, and, you know, people peddle this stuff for, for books and for, um, the gotcha lines and stuff like that. And we have to be discerning um, the false prophets and what they will do um, to get notoriety or even um, to, to for fame and fortune, maybe. I don't know. But um, so we need to, uh, we need to completely avoid that type of thinking. Um, everything we do needs to line up with the doctrine within the Bible and the truths. Uh, we shouldn't change truth uh, because we see it fit or we think, okay, well, it's 2024. That happened a long time ago, folks. The Bible wasn't written to you. It was written for you, okay? So that context, 200 and 2,400 years ago, there, that was written to the audience in that time. Um, and the storyline comes from that. However, it's written for us to take that and look at what is applying in principle and precept that would go along today. Let me give you an example. We know that back in Cain and Abel, back in Genesis, it, and, and Moses' law um, of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not murder or kill. Let me ask you, 2024, should you go around killing people? Probably not. So that's that's the example I'm trying to give you here. So uh, the rapture, some flat out reject it, uh, the very notion. They don't even think it's going to happen. Uh, some claim that uh, uh, no such doctrine exists um, except uh, when uh, John Nelson Darby uh, invented it in 1830. Um, and before that, a man named um, uh, Morgan Edwards wrote a short essay of pre-trib or pre-tribulation rapture as a college paper for the Bristol Baptist College in Bristol, England in 1744. Rumor has it that no one had ever heard of it at the time. Others claim the rapture doesn't exist in the word of God and therefore couldn't be or possibly be real. To that I say this. The word Bible isn't found anywhere in the Bible as well. But we know it certainly exists, right? So while it's true, the word isn't mentioned in the Bible, the words meant or mean to be caught up or snatched away. And we see that in Thessalonians 4, um, 16 and 17. And it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice angel, the voice of an archangel and the trump of God and the dead shall rise first, verse 17. Then we shall, we will be all, we will, we are alive, remain caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Basically the rapture, caught up, snatched away. Uh, I think I read somewhere in some of the uh, scholars book, Raptorio, uh, the Greek word is where they get rapture or something on that line. Don't quote me, but somewhere along that line. So the passage refers uh, to the belief that those that are alive during the rapture will be taken and met with the Lord. I just read you the verse. You can discern that that is true. I just read the verse. God can't lie. So as believers uh, of the event, and it arises a lot of times, I see... Uh, um, you know, I think about uh, uh, when will this occur, right? I I should focus on myself, no one else. I should focus on what the Bible says. Well, how do I meditate? I read the Bible. I read the Bible, and God talks to me and communicates with me. People say, well, I never know if he answers my prayer. Trust me when I tell you that uh, the more that you spend in his word, the more you will learn and the more he will show you 
and the more you become a mature Christian, um, the better that you are equipped to deal with all this crap in the world that we deal with. Um, will it happen in a seven year, uh, in, in uh, the seven year tribulation period described in the book of Revelations? Or will it happen in a midpoint of tribulation? Uh, what will happen there? Um, there's other concerns, the origin of the Antichrist. Many believe uh, it points to the Middle East as a source of the Antichrist, suggesting that he will be a Muslim. Others will say that uh, he'll come from Europe or he'll come from Russia um, or the United States. Some believe that he'll be the Pope, um, while others believe it'll be a Jew. Then there are children that consider um, if there is a rapture with all the children certainly on, what's the age of accountability uh, for these people to be removed from the planet along with true believers, or will they? Um, the children and parents are faithful followers of Christ will be taken with the church, leaving the ch uh, children uh, of parents who aren't saved to be left, on, left behind is a, a debate that's raging. Um, I think that if it, the, the age of accountability to me, uh, we all learn differently. I might learn a little slower than others, and uh, some may learn more uh, better than me or quicker or faster. But when I study these biblical texts, and like people ask me all the time, I believe there is a pre-tribulation rapture, mainly because of the relevance to Israel. Make no mistake, folks. I think the seven-year tribulation that is described in Revelation is meant for the Jews, not the church. Why do I say that? Well, we look at Jeremiah 30 with Jacob's trouble is the future time of distress. Um, that's prophesied. It's the prophet Jeremiah. Um, Jacob's trouble is who? Israel, right? It refers to the trouble descendants of Jacob, who is Israel. Israel themselves is what I'm talking about. So the seven-year uh, tribulation uh, was also prophesied in uh, Daniel in chapter 9. And we see this part where people like to take um, you know, I'm not into all the, the, the counting, the numbers, and all this other stuff, but I'll give you one narrative that uh, holds true. The book of Daniel foretells um, a 490-year timeline with 483 that's elapsed and leaves seven years known as Jacob's trouble to come. They're, they're saying that's coming. Um, so this period is for the Jews. As the church is now mentioned, uh, as the detailed description of the seven-year tribulation in, 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 in Revelations. And I'll tell you a little bit more. The reason for that is uh, the book of uh, Revelations includes seven churches in, the, in chapters 2 and 3, right? These letters are not mentioned. We don't hear it again from chapters 4 all the way to 19. There's a huge gap. doesn't discuss the church. talks about a lot of the tribulation, but... The church doesn't appear, so there's a large gap there. Um, and where uh, the church appears with Jesus to the millennial reign on earth after the seven year tribulations, that's when we learn about that millennial reign. Uh, so this passage should be taken at face value, okay? Um, the 144,000 Jews will be converted during the tribulation, um, and there's strong reasons for that, you know? Um, the passage talks about. 144 Jews will be converted. Um, uh, this is the very subject in chapter 7 um, to show who is to be saved during the tribulation. The answer is both Jews and Gentiles will be saved. Some of the 144,000 Jews and innumerable, innumerable amount of Gentiles will be saved. They'll become believers, basically. Um, this is described in the simplest, plainest terms. So, let me just say this. In the last days, um, there's the, the if you take 12,000 from each tribe of Judah, Reuben, Gad, Asher, Nephali, uh, Manasseh, Simeon, uh, Levi, Eshkar, uh, Zebulon, Joseph, and Benjamin, they were sealed. That equates to 144 Jews. We see that. Um, we know that the Jews will be redeemed. These are the 144 I'm talking about. 
uh, they are seen early in Revelation, always a remnant. If you notice, even in the Old Testament, God always leaves a remnant of Israel. Um, they're still his chosen people, trust me. And I believe that uh, when he come, when Jesus comes back, he will be in the temple. And I do believe um, uh, he will be in Jerusalem and he will defend off the, uh, the Antichrist. But um, so most of these Jews, uh, we, we, we know there'd be virgins. They haven't married. Um, the days of the uh, end times, we know, will be horrible, right? Um, just on, I mean, you can bury your head in the sand or you can be prepared. And this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help you be prepared. If I told you, or if God came down and said, I'm coming January 1st, 2025, and I'll be here at midnight, what would most people do? Live like they want. Do what they want. And then just before the time that he comes, then they try to be right. Uh, we should be living to glorify God. We should be living today uh, as Christians, sharing the gospel as we're commanded. Love one another. Love God with your mind, your, your, your whole body, your mind, soul, body, your spirit, everything about you, loving God. And uh, focusing on being more Christ-like and having the relationship with him. So, um, so there's a lot of people that will, uh, you know, they'll debate things. Um, there's an extraordinary co uh, commitment uh, will be with it, uh, to stand with Christ. So these 144, they're going to have a, a passion like, a, like the apostles and stand for Jesus when the time comes. Um, they'll be, you know, you can almost say that they'll be uh, from a special vow of ministers to people. Um, so will be severely attacked, persecuted by the Antichrist. So these people, the Jews, will be going through some persecution. Um, so the followers of the Lamb, wholly committed to Jesus Christ and separated from sin and evil from this world, that is, from the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, excuse me, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Um, the servants uh, will be ministers, of God and follow uh, the leadership of Lord Spirit. And they're going to go through the wilderness, hiding places, and there are, there's a lot of things that are going to happen uh, to escape the Holocaust and um, Antichrist. Um, if you believe the Bible, we will see things that this planet has never seen in a horrific way um, that can't even be described from uh, when he wiped out the earth with water, it destroyed everything. We can't even imagine how bad it'll be. That is uh, the life for the people that are lost today don't realize that in light of. Um, so they'll be redeemed among men, fruits of uh, God as a lamb, um, and they will be truthful, um, and they'll never lie about falsehood. So you're going to see a big difference in the Jews that are selected. Uh, and and, uh, and he, he, it will be accessible in the days of the Antichrist to lie. So Antichrist, he's going to be promoting, um, you know, evil and, 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 and the bad of the bad and all the stuff that uh, you could think of. He's going to be promoting all that. And, uh, you know, he's going to basically during that seven-year period, we, you know, we know that uh, three and a half years in, he's going to break that promise. He's going to come as a an angel, angel of light, and people are going to, just everybody's going to love him in three and a half years, he's going to change, and um, he's going to really truly tell you who he is at three and a half year mark. Um, so, they'll, so, no, we know that there'll be Jews, for sure. Uh, those are, uh, the focus is back to his people. I believe the church, myself, has been grafted in due to the sins or Jewish sins and unbelief, uh, as it's recorded in Romans 11, uh, must first be removed. Who's going to be removed? Us, the, the believers. This occurs via the rapture, thus cementing my belief that pre-tribulation evacuation. So, you know, essentially must be removed. Read, read Romans 11, that you can't, we'll be not here during that tribulation. Um, Revelations through, uh, 1 3 reads, uh, The blessed is one who reads 
allow the words of the prophecy, and blessed are those who hear and keep what is written in it. For the time is near. Despite being deep and full of symbolism, the book of Revelation was meant to be understood. Now, come on, folks. Do we choose not to believe what's in Revelations? Do we twist it to say, ah, oh, no, that's not going to really happen? Or are we going to roll a dice and just see if that's really going to happen and, and, and tempt God? And the Bible talks about not tempting God. So I want to emphasize, um, nobody knows this, the, the final table, okay, timetable, including myself. I am always reminded um, or mindful of the two chilling verses in the Bible teaching the end time prophecy. I want to emphasize that I do not claim to understand the prophetic timeline fully. I do not. But I know enough to know that I believe that there will be a uh, pre-tribulation rapture and there will be a, uh, a second advent or a second coming. Um, I firmly believe that the Word of God is flawless and complete. And in any way, in, in any way, should not be altered. So that's my interpretation of uh, the, while the pre-trib uh, is the only viewpoint in my, my, my analogy makes sense. I could be wrong, but think, think about this. No matter how it unfolds, I can assure you uh, that my point of view doesn't come from a prideful or a know-it-all spirit. The last thing I would ever want to do is to take or add or take away anything from the words of prophecy or the book of the Bible recorded in the book of Revelations. So let me end with this little piece here. Um, regardless of how you interpret the end times, whether uh, you proclaim to be a preterist, um, the belief that the prophecies written in the book of Revelations are to be full. A preterist is somebody who says, oh, all that's been done. Um, or you... you will be raptured or you don't believe that there's will be a statue in a way of saints and there is only one thing uh, that nevertheless binds us together all together that this is the one thing okay no matter what what you believe and that is this if you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and many and that he alone has the power to take away your sins you will be eternal you will be eternally saved if you repent and trust him for your in your salvation, whatever happens in the future, folks, you will leave this earth and live with the Messiah in a perfect and harmony, harmony forever and ever. So in short, it's really not going to matter what view you take. The end state is we're all being glory. That's what I want to say. So uh, praise God. Uh, and so that begs the question that I'm asking you right now. Do you know where you Will, will you spend in eternity? Do you have a clear view of the rapture and the second coming of Christ and what God has tried to do or Jesus has come, he's come uh, to be the propitiation, to take your place in the sins. And, and to, all we got to do is we got to believe on him and have faith in him, faith, hope, and trust. Turn from the way that uh, we, we were living for ourselves and, and live for him and put the glory of God on him. And uh, nobody can afford, in my opinion, um, to take that gamble. I don't think anybody needs to um, gamble and think that, uh, hey, I, uh, I don't think it's going to happen, this and that. You could be the smartest guy in the world, doesn't matter. But you don't know when he's coming. So we need to live light, life in the light of the return of Jesus, even if you, you, he doesn't return in your lifetime and you pass away, you know absolutely the body's present with the Lord. And when he calls up the saints from the dead, that's the bodily resurrection. Um, you're in heaven and your body will be adjoined in heaven um, in the future. So I could go on and on and on. But I just wanted to end with this. I love you. I implore you to believe on him 
believe in the gospel. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I will gladly take time. And I would love to see you in eternity as well as your family not taking a chance that, oh, this is not going to happen or whatever it may be. So, folks, Chaplain Dean Alley, God bless. I love you.